Today's message is called Weak and Strong Believers. And uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 23. I'm going to attempt to read it out of this um, larger print Bible, but I may have to switch over to my even larger print notebook. So, Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, 23, excuse me, chapter 14, verses 1 through 23, beginning with verse 1. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while uh, weak, weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord, and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are all the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Let us therefore no longer pass judgment on one another, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of another. I know and am, I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. If your brother or sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The one who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and has human approval. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for you to make others fall by what you eat. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or anything that makes your brother or sister stumble. The faith that you have, have, have as your own conviction for God. Blessed are those who have no reason to condemn themselves because of what they approve. But those who have doubts are condemned if they eat because they do not act from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. May God bless the reading of his holy word. weak and who is strong we are all weak in some areas and strong in others our faith is strong in an area if we can survive contact with sinners without falling into their patterns we're weak in an area if we must avoid certain activities or people or places in order to protect our spiritual life. We need to take a close look at ourselves and think about what our strengths and our weaknesses might be. When we are in doubt, 
we should ask ourselves, can I do that without sinning? Can I influence others for good rather than being influenced by them? In areas of strength, we should not fear of sinning because of what the world is doing around us. Without fear, we as Christians should move forward to serve God. In areas where we feel weak, we need to be cautious. If we have a strong faith in God, we're not, we're not doing any good keeping it to ourselves. We are not doing Christ's work in the world if we are keeping to ourselves. If our faith is weak and we expose that we have a weak faith, we are being foolish. We can do harm to ourselves as well as others. Verse 1, it says, Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. This verse is assuming there will be differences of opinions in church. Paul is writing, we should not quarrel about issues that are just a matter of opinion. Do not expect everyone to agree on every subject. Differences of opinions should be handled in love and respect for one another. I know churches that have closed because they fought over the carpet. It's through ideas that we can come to a fuller understanding of what the Bible teaches us. We need to keep in our minds to accept, listen to, and respect others. I'm trying, Steve. I'm trying to respect you. <laughs> Not doing a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll accept you and I'll listen to you then. But we should not let differences of opinion cause divisions between us and others. Differences of opinion can be a source of a learning and of bringing us closer in our relationships to each other. I'm OCD. If I got something that's got to be a certain way, it's got to be a certain way. If Stevie comes along and he moves it a quarter of an inch, I'm not back to my normal self until I've moved it back that quarter of an inch. <laughs> And he knows to stay clear of me within that time frame. <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad. He's made a choice to take one of our dog food containers downstairs. And I'm dealing with it. <laughs> I haven't moved it yet. <laughs> he's, he's waiting. He's waiting for me to move it. <laughs> but we're all different. And some of us are a little off kilter. I'm very awkward. And I know some of you are sitting there saying, yeah, I'm the same way. You get, you're, you're just like me. You're just not going to admit it out loud. Paul writes in verse 1 about weak faith. What is weak faith? Paul's speaking about immature faith. Immature faith is a faith that hasn't had time to grow in strength. Immature faith is still growing and learning each day. For example, if a person who once worshipped idols became a Christian, okay, they worship idols, now they become a Christian, they might understand perfectly well that Christ saved them through faith and that idols have no real power. They're going to understand that. But understanding that they are saved through faith and not man-made idols. This new believer in Jesus Christ is beginning to learn what is right and what is wrong. And you know when you're a new person in Christ, you're a newborn. You're learning. And I'm still learning. We're all learning. Every day is a learning experience. We keep growing with Christ each day. Every day. If you say you know it all, I'm sorry, you're wrong. You don't. You're still growing. There's going to be something you don't know yet. In this morning scripture, meat was mentioned. Because of this new Christian's past, they might be badly shaken if knowingly they had eaten meat that had been used in idol worship as part of the heathen ritual. 
that weighs on their conscience. They become a Christian and they know that meat was used for something in their view now is foolish. Another example, if the new Christian wants worship God on the required Jewish holidays, the new Christian will realize that Christ saved him through faith, not through his keeping all the Jewish laws. This new Christian may feel empty and unfaithful if on the feast days that he did not dedicate the feast to God. He's been so used to all his life or all his time in that idol worshiping that he did these things. So when he's not doing it anymore, he feels like, am I doing something wrong? Because he's still learning. He's still learning that it's, it's different. Getting used to worshiping in a different way, it takes time. When you switch from one church to another, it takes time to adjust. This church sings old traditional songs. This church sings the new contemporary songs. Well, they can't keep up with the new contemporary songs. They don't know the words. We're not singing. Those are too slow. So it's when you go to a new church, you're learning. It's a learning process. So they meet in the middle and they sing both. Not well, but they sing both. This new Christian in field is empty and he's unfaithful during the feast of the gods. All this is dedicated to God. Getting used to worshiping in a different way, it takes time, as I said. It takes time. The entire process of being a new believer in Christ can take time. Don't expect somebody that's brand new in Christ to change in the week of an eye unless that's God's will to change them in the week of an eye. It's going to take time. Paul responds to both of these examples of new Christians in love. Both of these new Christians are acting according to their consciousness. consciousnesses. They are being honest with their opinions about their past. But their scruples do not need to be made into rules for the church. There are some issues that are central to the faith and worth fighting for. But many issues are based on individual differences and should not be legislated. Our principles should be in essentials, in essential unity, in non-essential liberty, and in everything love. In other words, give and take. I'll let you be right some of the time, but I'm going to be right most of the time. No. You both got to be right some of the time. And if, if it's really wrong, then hopefully somebody will intervene and say, you're really wrong. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 2 it says, Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Eating anything refers to eating meat offered to idols. Eating only vegetables refers to one weaker in faith who eats only vegetables and refuses to eat meat that has been offered to idols. Now, I don't want you thinking in some kind of weird mindset right now that we're talking vegetarians and vegans in this business. We're not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about idol meat and stuff like that. These habits that some vegans and vegetarians have, that's their eating habit now. I don't think it's because there's any idol worshiping going on. It's just their choice. I'm carnivorous. No. I want meat. You might ask, how would Christians end up eating meat that had been offered to idols? Well, how'd they get in that mess? When we look at the ancient times or the ancient system of sacrifice as a center of the religious, social, and domestic life of the Roman world, we notice after a sacrifice was presented to a god, in a heathen temple, only part of it was burned. They didn't burn all of it. The remainder was often sent to the market to be sold. They're going to make some money off that meat they didn't use. So they take it to the market to sell it. This part of it was cooked and used as worship or burnt to a crisp and idolized. <coughs> and this part can be sold to people that would eat it. That's why Christian might easily, even unknowingly, buy such meat in the marketplace or eat at a home of a friend that had purchased that meat. We might ask ourselves, should a Christian question the source of the meal? The only time I question the source of the meal is I know somebody shoots deer or rabbit or squirrel. I don't eat that. I don't eat turtle either. 
So in those households, I ask them, what is that? <laughs> I've never, to my knowledge, I've never had anybody sneak anything on me, and I hope they never do. But in those households, I ask, what is that? And most of the time, they love me enough that they tell me that it's deer, it's rabbit, or whatever. And I'll suddenly even say, I threw a hot dog on for you, and you know what's got to be <laughs> But I'll eat that. <laughs> Oh my. But we might ask ourselves, should a question a Christian actually question the source? There are some that thought there was nothing wrong with eating meat that had been offered to idols. After all, idols were not real gods. After other Christians carefully checked the source of the meat that was purchased, or they did not eat the meat at all because they did not know for sure where it had been or how it was used. And I'm sure there's been places you've gone where you've questioned what it had been and you didn't touch it either. And it might have been more than just meat. You're like, I don't know where that's been. Ah, oh, I'm not touching it. <laughs> Probably some it. The not knowing for sure was a problem for those who at one time had been idol worshippers. For them, this was a strong reminder of their pagan days. They feared and was very concerned of this weakening their newfound faith. They've, they've got a faith now. They believe in God. They don't want to mess it up. Their conviction is to see God. Verse 10 to 12 says, Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or, or why do you despise your brother or sister? <clears throat> For we all will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Each person is accountable to Jesus Christ, not to others. The church must be uncompromising in its stand against activities, activities expressly that are forbidden by the scriptures. Now there are going to be those outside these four walls that are going to really disagree with what Paul says in this message. But Paul's list includes adultery, homosexuality, murder, and theft. We need to listen to what Paul is trying to tell us. Paul is saying that the church should not create additional rules and regulations and give them equal standing with God's love. So many times Christians base their moral judgments on opinion or personal dislikes or cultural bias rather than on the word of God. When a Christian bases their moral judgments on opinion or personal dislikes or cultural bias rather than the word of God, they are showing that their own faith is weak. They seem to think that God is not powerful enough to guide his children. When we stand before God's court of justice, or better known as the judgment seat, when we are standing there before the judgment seat, I'll just bet, I'm just willing to bet, you will not be the least bit worried about what our Christian neighbors has done or how they think. That's going to be the last thing on my mind when I'm standing here in front of God. I bet. Although they might get me for gambling. He said, you bet on it. Shame on me. <laughs> Looking at verse 13, it tells us, Strong and weak Christians can cause their Christian brothers and sisters to stumble. A strong Christian that is insensitive may flaunt his freedom and unintentionally offend other consciences. The crooked or the scrupulous weak Christian may try to fence others in with petty rules and regulations. You can't have that until you wash your hands five times and turn around in three circles and then go back and wash your hands again. <laughs> then you can have that. Either one of these would cause problems between believers. Paul is trying to tell us to be both 
both strong in faith and sensitive to others' needs. If you know that somebody, I, I mean, I'm addicted to food. I think we all are to a point, but I'm, I really have an addiction to food, and I have to be extremely careful what I do, because my addiction can take over very easily. If you know that someone is, has a really strong addiction to something like food or drink or something, there's nothing wrong with that food or drink, but if you're causing them to do that or get into that, and it's going to be harmful to them, you're causing them to stumble. So we want to take that into consideration to maybe not force that big old linen pie on them if you know we can't have it. Because it could cause them to stumble and it may just mess up all our hard work. But he's telling us to be sensitive. We are all strong in some areas and, and other things we're just weak. But we do constantly monitor the effect of our behavior on others. We have to constantly watch. Paul urges us to be sensitive to those faith, uh, whose faith may be harmed by our actions. Paul's saying we should not sacrifice liberty and Christ just to satisfy the selfish motive, motives of those who are trying to force their opinions on us. We should not fear or criticize others for their opinion. Everybody's entitled to opinion. I know you're wrong. But I'm going to let you voice your opinion. Don't tell me you're right, because I know you're wrong. But you're still, <laughs> you can still voice your opinion. And <laughs> Steve's looking at me like, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ <clears throat> and follow the teachings as slow, closely as we can. Paul says in verse 14 and 15, I know I am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. If your brother or sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the reign of one for whom Christ died. Verse 20 says, Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for you to make others fall by what you eat. Sin is not just a private matter. Everything we say or do affects others. We should be thinking of others constantly before our actions cause someone to fall out of grace with God. God actually created us to be uh, interdependent. Interdependent means we are created to be dependent on each other's needs. God did not intend for us to be totally independent. When we are a believer in Jesus Christ, we are a Christian. We are strong in our faith. Without pride or condensation, we are to treat others with love, with patience, and with self-restraint. As believers in Jesus Christ try to steer ourselves clear of actions that are forbidden in the scriptures. Sometimes scripture is silent. When scripture is silent, that is when we would, should follow our conscience. When God shows us something is wrong for us, we should avoid it. We're not to look down on other Christians who exercise their freedom in their other areas. Looking back at verse 10, why do you pass judgment on your brother and sister? We will all stand before the judgment seat of God. In verse 12 it says, each of us will be accountable to God. The knowledge of the scriptures affects our attitude toward the present and the future. The, move we, we, uh, the more we know about what God has done in the past, the greater the confidence we have about what he will do in the days ahead. We should try and read our Bibles frequently than we do. We should be searching the scriptures for God's truth. This is going to increase our trust that God's will is best for us or best for us. For anyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your written word. 
Thank you for giving us personal responsibilities to use in helping to bring others to Jesus Christ. Thank you for your guidance in becoming a living sacrifice to you. Thank you for giving us guidance to be obedient in your eyes. Thank you for helping us love one another without judgment. Thank you for strong leaders in our Christian brothers and sisters to help the new believers in Christ grow in wisdom and knowledge of your kingdom. Thank you for our fellowship among other believers in Jesus Christ. Most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. Please forgive us when we say or do things that are unpleasing in your eyes. Help us to grow stronger and love you more every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.